Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Amarnacon Saturday morning. I hope you're all alive. I think. Aren't it? Yes. I'm person with the robes. Yes. I would like to introduce one of our resident Daves for his panel on. The original Dave. The original. <laughs> uh, just to remind you, five o'clock is the deadline for booking your meal tonight, or for the, for Sunday evening meal. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yes, it's a typical one style, the guy talking about you for 61. 55, I'm not that far behind. Right, okay. We are here because we are sci fi and fantasy fans. We've been that probably most of our lives. And it's our influences, we're probably the kids. Me being a child of the 60s and that, I grew up with um, Thunderbirds and Doctor Who. John Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and things. But really, it's not about me sitting here talking because that's boring. But it's going to be another roundhouse for you guys. We're going to split it into chunks. <coughs> we'll television, <coughs> books, we'll look at other. And it's just reminis everybody reminiscing what got you into sci fi? What was the TV series that you thought? I want more of this. Journey what? into space. space on the radio. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, I must be, to be honest. My, 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 my journey into sci-fi for me, it wasn't from sci-fi, it was from sci-fan. Again, the show in the 60s, I watched the Moon Man live, and there was nothing in the world more exciting than that. So after the Moon Landings, sci-fi, everything else for me. So, I was born in 69, so I kind of like missed it. It's also, <laughs> also this is quite inspired because, as it, you people may have spotted, we have Bagpus on the last global this year, because Bagpus is 50 this year. We also have a stun gun for Space 1999, because that is also 50 this year. And I can chip in that it used to be what I grew up on as a stable diet was 1pm every Sunday, Space 99, Alien of the Week. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so what I want to do, I'm going to 15 minutes to tell you, split it into two, but 15 minutes of other, split it for all of this. What, what do you remember? People say, oh, I remember that one. Never heard of it. So, does anyone want to kick off? Television. You mentioned bank posts. Richard Green was in Robin Wood, and it was my absolutely. And it was my favourite, favourite, favourite film. And then I got measles, and I had spots on my arms, and I had to be in the dark room for three weeks. And I was crying because I could hear. Richard Green, yeah, Robin Hood on the TV, the other room, and my dad's in the music, which is Journey into Space, yeah, so me and my dad and some of the committee. That's radio, not TV. No, no, it's kind of, you see, I can't use the original. Yeah, it's Robin Hood. Robin Hood. Robin Hood. Anybody else? We've got, we've got. Yeah, um, we've got downstairs for... Yeah. Oh, there's three when I was I used to go close to my primary school there, and I used to go on for lunch, and, and mm -hmm. it's, we're watching it on telly and mm -hmm. Time for lunch. I never ran faster in my life. I ran, oh, <laughs> telly on, telly on, and then telly on for lunch. I was never faster. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
anything to do with science fiction or anything else. So Flash Gordon was a revelation for me and really woke me up to the possibility of another place. I remember Flash Gordon from like um, <coughs> children's holiday television. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but the thing I always had a problem with, for some reason, the television shows that had running see, adventure stuff each week was shown at the holiday times for London, which for some reason was always a week later yeah. than down yeah. south west. Yeah. So the number of shows I watched as a kid and never saw the final episode, because I had to go back and I'd go buy the DVD box sets just to watch the last episode. That's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> well, so you're talking about running London, so um, telling to watch TV. Saturday morning, I'm the heart of one of our televisions. For two and a half hours, wait for Marine Wars to come off. Oh, oh yes! Because yes. I'll be there with the test part, you know, and then I think got to 12 30. Marine Boy's the first animation. Yeah, because that, that's why it's the first it? Japanese yeah. animation. Yeah, I used to love that. Yeah. I mean, there, there, are, there are older series, obviously, but, but in yeah. terms of showing in Britain or American Marine yeah. Boy. Because it's kind of, and now, of course, when you watch it, you can tell that the, um, the writers, you know, they gave the villagers at least silly names. Like, I'd sit there and watch it with like, you know, Captain Greenstalks or something like that, or, or Bad McMahon or something like that, and you just fall around laughing, and of course, then you recognise the voices because then you go on to Speed Racer. Uh, what's it called? Racer. I know of it, never saw it. Yeah, because I kind of saw a bit of it, but they had, um, yeah. I can't remember the lady's name, who voiced for me, and they had a kind of number, they must have had a number of actors that did voiceovers for it. You know, so the Kurt Oaks Marine Boy must have been the Stingray. Mm. Mm. They're not even around the same time, actually. The Stingray, I think, remembers. No, Final Episode 5, then there was Stingray. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Supercard was the Stingray. Yeah, because I think Stingray, is, but it depends on who you, where you resonate. Because I always wanted to be Marine and breathe underwater mm. and not shut up. Mm. Um, of course, in the later years, I think, well, the Toy Time has had a bit of a big go on. One water bay, one up. There. I think I think he loved Marina, but he used um, Atlanta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I think he would have, you know, looking at Atlanta respect, he'd probably use Atlanta to get to the dance and get promotion. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I do remember that because every Saturday morning, I knew it wasn't going to be until half twelve. But I was sat in front of the telly, test card on, hoping against hope they might put it on earlier. <laughs> Who else was brought up with the Dan Dare pilot of the water? I don't know. It's all my time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That moment yeah. took more like yeah. comics, though. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, so the Eagle. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, the, the Eagle. I remember reading the Eagle. It's an incredible production of Dan Dare's series, and they did the design, they built the modern work, and they got canned. Yes, it was an ambitious series. Oh, yeah. um, yeah, I do, I do remember the Eagle. Yeah. Well, my favourite is that they did. Is it the finish? It's an audio movement of that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. Oh, yes. Really? Oh, that's you, John. No, I, I, I hate to say, if you show it today, it'd be a documentary. Yeah. Actually, it works with survivors. Yeah. 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 Post COVID, that's a documentary series, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Heck, survivors, yeah. Survivors, the virus, where did it start? China. Same as COVID. Yeah. 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 What about it, but, but all those people in the, on the um, leading, coming off the plane and waving to everybody and yeah. spreading yeah. it? Yes, yeah. literally. <laughs> Yeah. I think it was the scariest sci-fi that was ever on TV. Yeah. Don't think Chris Wall's here. I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, yes, I agree with you. Nobody else remembers it but we What's do. that? What's the that? The Red Grass. It was in 1958. Um, I'll make my parents let me watch it. It was absolutely mm. terrifying. Uh, 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 Red Grass came down on a meteorite and it rustled. Oh. And if it touched you, you went mad. Did they do a... Uh, uh, did, I mean, I might have been shown my time to see, but maybe... I wonder if they did a, a new series of it, or whether they'd show because it was all in black and white ones. You didn't get the first colour taste on one. This was black and white. Yeah, so well, it was broadcast. It was like every 1958. It was like all the worlds, wasn't it? Like, uh, uh, Simmerish. Oh, Trippies. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere between War of the World and Trippies, but it was yeah. really, really scary. Well, and really it was aimed at kids. It's scary. Oh, I know it's the dragon's domain. Who's the only other person who remembers it? The monster that sucks you in and spits out your dead body. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, watching that as a kid, oh my God, it's TV. Well, just see the Tom and Jerry, the violence on that. Yeah, but yes. <laughs> you know, get your tail blown off, or all of them very famous when they make made us laugh as um, as as Saturday they had the entire Tom has his head chopped off. Uh, you're not sure, but there's the the two mice. And it's not the kind of survival. It's just crashing and sensing. Yes. Well, that's the latest thing. Look, look, I think the scariest one is the one that you don't see. What was it? You know, the implied one. I mean, you look at Jaws, for example. I mean, oh, you yeah. didn't see the sharks till near the end of the movie. Well, it's a suspense. Do you know why? Yeah, Steven, it didn't work. It didn't Steven Spielberg was on the test at Island Gas yesterday. He yeah. says the shark kept breaking down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it broke it. Can't be used it. The other problem yeah. I had it, just the, the yeah. body work was foam that, and yeah. you put the water, it started soaking the water off, yeah. and it would get lower and lower and no. lower. Because yeah. yeah. if you look at one, one scene where the sharks come together, you can actually see the face fold. You can actually see. Um, I've never analysed that much, yeah. I just know it's a good movie. Okay, well, we're sliding into film. What's your early sort of sci fi <coughs> fantasy film? Ooh. I think it's a first film I ever saw at the cinema was 2001. It was the first film I ever saw at the cinema was 2001. It was the first film I ever saw at the cinema was 2001. Well, I'm going to talk about it because the earliest one I saw at the cinema was. Yellow Submarine. Yellow Submarine. Yellow Submarine. Oh, really? It was the first fantasy or sci fi film I saw at the cinema. I know. I'm the first time I went to the cinema. I'm the first time I went to the cinema. And those skeletons. Yes. Yeah. And the skeletons. Yeah. 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 I just seen the cover of it. The first time I wanted to do with the blue cap was in Exeter University <coughs> with Terry Pratchett. They did a convention up there, and, and, and their guest of honour wasn't Terry, and boring as heck. And they had Terry sat at the back. Boring head. Boring as heck. Been <coughs> and, and they had Terry, who came along with a hell of it, sat at the back reading the newspaper. And then do put the blue cap and put on. So we all went and watched that one. So weird head. And, and then we kicked out to Terry for interviewing him. So Jason Yard works in the season, yeah, Ray, um, Ray Harryhausen. Yeah, Ray Harryhausen. Yeah. yeah. The man. <coughs> oh, the so legend. The Sinbad movies. Oh, oh, oh yeah. 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 And actually, the early ones won him, weren't they? He didn't come in until. Um, the skeleton. No, he did. 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 What well, I've never seen on what the seat is, but the Grand Spirit. Cowboys and Dinosaurs. That was brilliant. I've never seen it. I know of it, I've never seen it. Really? It's been on TV loads. And they see. Ballet is called. 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 Ballet is called.
we went further and further back, we realised that there's things overlaid and were overlaid. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that there's a thing back in primordial times mm -hmm. that scared somebody who scared somebody who scared somebody. Mm -hmm. And then one of the people investigating gets chased by the ghost, yeah. forced to their death. Cool. They shut the project down, and as the guy's walking out, out he can hear her screaming. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, that, more, it's, it's, it was a TV, TV show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's all done with like flashy lights and sound. And it's innuendo. You can s you don't see anything, that's but the, the implied the violence mm -hmm. that's there is really oh, terrible. That's what that triggered me. That's what got me yeah, into. I can watch gory movies. I can't listen to them. Yeah, yeah, you can rip somebody's head off. I'm fine if it goes. <laughs> <laughs> and sound is I said that last year. Phil? But and this is go up whatever you like. What 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 do you remember? Well there's all the classics I've got because I used to read every book that came out. And my mum did the bills and my dad did have his own crap. Um I must say I got into the books because what my got Another died, my father remarried, his step family didn't like sci-fi. So I wasn't allowed to watch sci-fi because it's mm -hmm. crunch. Bizarre, they all watched Blade, they watched Blade 7. Yeah. That was cool, but they wouldn't watch Doctor Who. That's my, my step family. Mm -hmm. So I but my brother so I was into reading all the novels and I I got like A and C and uh Edward Cooper and Curry Road and But before that, what the only three people I know know of I think and you're one of them. Is I used to read a, a children's set of stories about a family on a spaceship flying around our adventures, which was Dragon 4 5. And I think you're the only other person I've ever come across who remembers it. It was a Dragon 4 5 was the name of the ship, and a family on board with a pet. Is this a bit of a precursor to Lost in Space? Follow on. It must have come after that. Anyway. But, uh, this, 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 but it was very much, although it was written as children's stories, it wasn't kiddie adventures. They had plot, they had adventure, they had a bit of threat, a bit of resolution. <coughs> but yeah, you're, you're, apart from me and Addy, you're the only person I've ever known. You say, oh, well, the other one was the kids, not the books, all the stuff put out by Nicholas Fisk. Vast numbers of young adult SF to devour. Well, that's, that's the thing. You've got um, young adult literature now and the Hunger Games and all that sort of stuff. We had it, it just wasn't labelled as such. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't quite. One of the other things is why is it young adult now? Is, is we must have kids who are fighting for their lives because that's young and it's adult. Mm -hmm. When they told that there was a kid out who'd like to understand them. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's brilliant. Tomorrow will be. Lovely, yeah. Lighting for your life is a, a folk tale trope, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Mummy yeah. and Daddy will not be here forever. You must therefore stand up for yourself. Um, it comes like, goes back to practice. Punching your brother. Guy, have yeah. you ever noticed that in these films where the child is stranded somewhere, mm. as in Jurassic Park, where the kid's stranded on the island with the dinosaurs, they're all doing fine in Alien. Newt is strange. They're doing absolutely fine, they're surviving, and then the adults turn totally totally all go to bed. It's the adults. That's a very good point. Yeah, but I think that was all sorts of Was that started by Lord and Flans? Did they? Now, I'm going to ask a question that's probably, probably my. There is something I remember seeing that was a story. Wasn't there R. James? Something similar about uh, a family in a house that I think was haunted by a chap who used to steal children's salt. And then two ghost children were trapped to something. I can clearly remember the ending. Mm -hmm. The family was saved, and these two kids were out and they're waving goodbye and they couldn't rip the long fingernails like vampires. But I can't remember. That's an awful thing I've heard. Yeah, parts, it's, but it could be. I don't know. Yeah, but it's it's quite something I saw years, years ago. Yeah, 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 twin yeah. ghosts. <laughs> There's quite a few with like twin ghosts that come out walls. Yeah, but I can specifically remember because there was some evil answer that used to nick kids' souls or something. And these two children, of course, it was the kids that saved the day or what have you. 
And there was a final scene when they're in the house and you could see these two children waving at them in Victorian clothing, but they had big long fingernails. Yeah. It was like there was like a, a vampiric. And I've never forgotten that, but I can't remember what I saw it in. It wasn't, there was a tales of mystery and imagination. Yeah. They did that, but the kids came back at the end and got their own back because they ate the heart of the diabetes. It, 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 it's, it's something like that, but I just can't, but I just, it does but that sound final like scene so part. vivid in my head. Sorry? Yeah. It does sound like very similar to it. M.R. James, yeah. Lost Heart. Yeah. I'll have to check up on that, because M.R. James, you know, he's... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can I ask something things? But I'm I'm slightly younger than you guys, and I kind of like grew up in the 80s with all the kids' cartoons, yeah. toy commercials, that kind of thing. But uh, and I was going to say, Roger Rabbit was horrifying oh, yeah. to me as an eight-year-old. We went to, we, that was the that was the first oh, time like, <laughs> major film we went to see at the cinema. There wasn't like a distant cartoon, and that was terrifying. <coughs> expensive film, not from a technical point of making, but from all the licensing you <laughs> had to get through. Oh, yeah. I mean, you only got, and it was very much like, yes, you can have Mickey Mouse, but he needs like star bidding. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, you could make it, say, just both. Yeah. But, uh, well, they, they tend, people tend to say, oh, you can never do that today. I mean, look at Wreck-It Ralph. That had dozens of licensed True. characters, isn't it? But that's, especially the second one, where they had all the, the only time all the Disney princesses have appeared together on screen. Oh, really? What was that in? Oh, Wreck-It Ralph 2. Yeah, there's there's a bit where the girl ends up in, in, in a room with all the Disney princesses. She oh, works out all the Disney princesses. Disney princesses. No, no, Leia wasn't there. No. And, uh, <laughs> no, it was Frank and Fur. Frank and Fur. Oh, 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 yeah, it's old enough that we were probably kids yeah. when it came out. Mm -hmm. Is that an influence? Yeah. I'm, I'm probably going to say yes, and I didn't yeah, see it until well, both in my early. 20s. But well, it was an influence. Yeah, it was all made up from all those films, that, the, the B movies that have run before this. I'm, I'm not mine. Well, I don't mind Rocky Horror the film. Mm. I had a problem with Rocky Horror the stage show. I liked well, it. Well, on the one hand, all the audience interaction. Yeah. It's based on the film. Yeah. So the first time I saw it, you got the bit when the um, narrator comes out, yeah. twists the line, where's your beeping yeah. neck? Well, well he even had the guy who was the dance yeah. instructor from RDI, and he's got an enormous, he's like a giraffe. Yeah. I thought, where's his neck? It's there, I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> and the other thing I had, I had a real problem the first time I saw it. And there they are doing the business on the stage. On the table. And I've got my wife in saucy underwear on one side of me and my ex-girl on the other side of me, <laughs> and the sudden realisation that I'm getting embarrassed. <laughs> Crossing me legs. Which way do you think? Tough interval. No, I What were you wearing? Oh, I was worse than the pair of them. But <laughs> 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 Actually, no, that was the one. I went there, I hadn't even got in yet, and a total stranger just grabbed the back of my bottom half of my costume, yanked it out, and shoved right down the back of me. Yeah. 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 I've got it. I've got back. To, I've got back to our house. Those days, Alan, I was staying in a flat. I've got back to the flat. We unbuttoned the costume. Right, <laughs> right shot across the. When we moved out a year later, we were still finding bits of that. It's like a pudding. The, the gold hat. Yeah. We we sprayed it down at Lee's house. Yeah. 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 When we first did the gold hat for Richard Bean. Oh no. Right. We managed to find. We, we, we cleared the flat when we left, and there was a bit of old we could not clear. We, we moved up to the house, we kept it in a bag, in a bag, and didn't take it out, and still the room that had the hat in it had to be hooped with the gold bit to go flex yeah. on a regular basis. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I saw the house, oh look, something's shiny, it must be yours. <laughs> <laughs> 
Five years, I think, I think my funniest one, the Rocky Horror one, was when he first came on tour to Plymouth, directly on the theatre of Plymouth, was the co op. Yes. Complete with his laundry department. Yes. It was hilarious going the, in there the day after the show had gone, and all these tiny little women were going in with basts and corsets saying, Oh, it doesn't fit. Can I get a small yeah. one? <laughs> yeah, I'll bet your husband fit perfectly. Yeah. 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 Because it's when it came out of true, I don't think they kind of allowed that amount of interaction with it. I mean, the squirt guns, and of course everybody dressed up as one of the characters when they did the, uh, the, the uh, time warp. Um, but there was one that he did rather very spectacular. I mean, what's the name of the chick he did Stars and Tribe? What's her name again? Sorry, brain popped up. I mean, have quite a few of those, but I would have to say, not body shame or anything, but they weren't the best shape to be wearing. Stars and Stripe shorts and. Yeah, you get, you get my drift. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then again, I think, I think Rocky Horror is a state of mind rather than yes, state of body. Yes, it is, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it has some interest. I mean, uh, I think a couple of um, you know, they could, uh, came as lost of space. But, I mean, the, the, but the thing is, that I think at that time, nobody would get a tuxedo on it because, uh, from, from the second hand shop because everybody had got them to wear so they could do the penguin, you know, for the, for the time walk dance. Um, but they were just they were, they were dissuaded from doing it around the arm because it was a fire as the people wanted to get out. I think one that should come back, consuming the states or whatever. Did anybody go and see the Thunderbirds FAB show? Oh, where the guys had their hats and wood and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, and they, the they were brilliant. That was just brilliant. Yeah. They toured for like two or three years and then some sim sims. I thought that show could have gone on an annual tour. Well, it was, yeah. on, it was on TV quite a bit because that's when I saw they them. Did you know, they, they did a fantastic. You know, they do the um, the what was it? They used to have a backing track or something. They move. Well, they, they mainly did. Mainly fun words and a little bit of Captain Scarlet. Yeah. But for the encore, they'd, they'd do Stingray. Oh, wow. <laughs> Complete the guy rushing across with a terror fish. And another guy, another guy running and then hopping on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> and the terror fish goes the other way, and, the guy, and then the guy runs across and he's got a torpedo with sparklers at the back. So he's got a torpedo machine. <laughs> 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 what is that? Brilliant. Do it again! Yeah. 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 Mind, mind, oh god. Um, the guy used to come Right. He bought a load of tickets for a show called, called, called American Eve. And it was a show about the history of a comic book character, that fictional one, but where all the cast played the production crew and the characters. And they did it through the 40 years of history. So it started off, you know, initially he's fighting to town Claw. Mm -hmm. We've spoken about Jan and Agnes and that kind of thing. And they'd gone to like the 17th bit and then and the 18th bit and they were doing um, Iranian terrorists. So the Iranian terrorists leapt out of the plane, which bizarrely was the entire audience. So the whole audience had to put hands on your head to get your head down. Oh. And, and they did a bit there where they started getting fan mail written in crayon. And we enjoyed the show so much that we found out two weeks later it was going to be an Exeter. So we all went to see it again and we all sent letters in crayon. <laughs> <laughs> shop which was now a, um, a, a bric a brac shop and I remember them going there and I remember that one of the one of the sections was about um, um, had uh, an Egyptian theme but I can't find it mm. but I remember being really inspired by that uh, you know mm. the, 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 and it, it had the sort of mysterious shopkeeper <laughs> But the, the, the two children would go and, and, and visit the shop and go on adventures. There's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you've just figured me now, somebody. Mr. Ben. Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh. 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 No, that's definitely fantastic. I, always, fantasy, I always wanted to make the Mr. Ben the band episode where Mr. Ben goes and tries the Rocky Horror costume. <laughs> 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 Somebody appears a lot. Actually, yeah. we did for the convention in the days when we used to have Michael Sheard come in. Yeah. We realised that Michael Sheard looked an awful lot like the shopkeeper. Yeah. So we talked a local fancy dress shop to let us photograph Michael Sheard dressed in the shop 
dressed in, in, in the waistcoat to the feds, looking like the shopkeeper, and we took a load of photos, and we were going to do a stop motion animation of Mr. Ben, who was quite sure it was the shopkeeper. <laughs> Sadly, um, we never um, had some, And um, one of those used to did a, a skit on Mr. Ben, but it was um, uh, Mr. Benton, because he did it as a... Uh, he was... Yeah, he was... He yeah, had the, the same sort of style as Mr. Ben, but private Benton from um, Dr. Hope. The first time our con we did a proper masquerade, our second con, we were in a venue during the day but we couldn't have the evening because our main hall was the art centre cinema and they were showing films in the evening. So, so, so we went to a local disco high up the top floor as a pipe for a private function and did our masquerade and a party in there. And I can remember because I was doing the con fair in that time before all the acts were coming and one guy said he's doing the grey lensman. And I've read, he, I've read um, E. Doc Smith's Lensman series. Mm -hmm. I thought, hang on, the great Lensman, that's a grey leather jumpsuit. How the heck's the guy going to do this? Mm -hmm. When it got to the mass grave, the guy appeared from the back of the audience in a grey suit, grey shirt, grey tie, with half a dozen cameras around his neck, and we got to the judges and went, click, <laughs> and walked off. <laughs> <laughs> that one, I think of that one. Yeah. Some of the pulpy, yeah. pulpy sort of stuff, so the Lensman series, Flash Gordon, mm -hmm. Buck Rogers. Mm -hmm. I mean, Buck Rogers in, in, in the uh, 1980s. Yeah. yeah. The, the, in the 20th century. Colonel Deering. The alien princess who had basically a low split and not a lot of Oh, yeah, the little robots. the same thing about the Flash Gordon movie from the 80s. Oh, God, yeah. That was one of the lovely scenes at the end. Genius, that. Yeah, well, lovely. It was a bizarre one, isn't that? That came out because of Star Wars. And Star Wars came out because George Lucas wanted to make Flash Gordon and couldn't get the rights. So it's George Lucas's fault that we got Flash Gordon. And what a great Flash Gordon it was. Oh, it is good. And, 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 and I know they did a TV series in the yeah, naughty that they did one year. Yeah. But they went sort of more than I thought. I don't think I watched it. I don't think I saw part of it. No. Well, children's TV, before they shot it to CBC, I mean, they used to, I know it was probably for an hour or so, they even made perhaps happen. But you did get a good chunk of programs. It'd been two, twice a week with Bear and Blue Peter. Mm. Which got a good sort of cartoons. You got the picture, you know, like you say, the children's stones. New mm. piece, you get good cartoons, a magic roundabout. The, the original one, Eric Thompson. Um, but earlier you'd have what's the other, you know, like had the wooden tops. Um, Mary, Mary Mungo and Mitch. Yeah, Mary Mungo and Mitch, you know, very, very socialist. That was the one. Like. <laughs> but and now, now if you want to see, you've got to see a whole separate channel. And I don't watch oh, it, used, it used to be. Yeah. The magic roundabout was on. Everybody rushed home from work. Yeah, because it was always before the news. Yeah. And I, th I thought rhubarb and custard was the greatest thing oh, in the world. Yes, yeah. it is. And of course, um, what's then the uh, Will of the Wisp? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And they had, they had um, him on the, the, the top ten series. <laughs> oh, why is it even a new one? And then I went to a party and they played big oh, magic round about on the other yeah. side. Because it said, piss off. And he did so all over Florence. All over Florence. So, so they wouldn't buy it on the big sections. So, <laughs> so, so, if, so if, so if you look at what we, we had when we were growing up, the children's stones, which yeah. I, I'd say that we took to a pole, shit everybody up yeah. in the room. Yeah. Um, yeah. We yeah. 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 Which was yet another dystopian thing. Mm. Um, there was that children's program with the, I can't remember the name, I'm sorry, but somebody might where the girl falls into the painting every time she goes to sleep. Oh, and, yes. Uh, one of them, yeah. she passes yeah. scribbled over, and then gradually yeah. monsters getting closer as a yeah. brother. Yeah. Yeah. Just that like, we're trying to track that I thing. can't remember it either. Yeah. But these are the ones I remember. That, were there any happy ones, apart from the cartoons like Mr. Ben? Oh, yeah, wacky, yeah. right? Yeah. Things like that. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of Hanna Bear. Hanna Bear. Hanna Bear. Hanna Bear. Cartoons. Oh, the bananas. Oh, bananas. I don't remember any live action. 
I mean, you say er, but it, it, it's run in, in various yeah. iterations yeah. for what? And his kids loved it. Yeah, yeah. Kids loved it. And going on to other things than that, and toys and games and that, I mean, the fact that Pokemon trading cards are now coming off their 20th anniversary. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was the 25 years old. Yeah. But, but, but yeah, toys and that, and again, going back to the 70s and the space yeah. one, and I don't care who was talking about it. Mm. Yeah. And we remember Major yeah. Matt Mason. No he, 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 was, he was a tiny little action figure of Space Man. Mm. Only what he actually was was a wire framework with rubber smoke around. These days, you never make one because you always want to get it through. Health and safety. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't remember discovering how an action was happening. Yeah, the one exploded on me. It was a head tail on by a piece of bulky little. Yeah, that's good. Pick someone, man. Come on, pick someone. I just. I heard somebody mention you this is Yes, yes. And I was going to say, I absolutely bloody love that. I actually got beaten up really badly at school. I don't know why were beaten up for anything at school, oh uh, including my love of ancient history. But through yeah. them, I got a lot of But I was, I was saying, yeah. that's the only series I saw where it actually ended happening. Why didn't the last episode? Yeah. They I got home. But again, I can yeah, like, go back to, for some yeah. reason down here, yeah. you always saw the start of the series, you never <laughs> saw the end of it. Because yeah. 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 it was years before I saw the end of it, because obviously I've got a friend who <coughs> gets it off the internet for me. But I can remember kind of earlier on, you know, when I moved down here, because I came down, uh, came down to formulate to do my first training. And it was kind of rather telling, because it was good otherwise, but then that one. Yeah. Um, and I actually saw it, and it was it's actually, because the last two episodes, and Bloody hell, this is actually ending on a happy note. And you get a conclusion. Yeah. Mm. Well, There's like that. Yeah. Mm. like a bit of Greek mythology as well. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone remember the Flashing Blade? Oh. Yes! Yeah. Dun, More dun, than dun, that, dun, does anyone dun, remember dun, in the 80s, mm. there was a children's series called um, On the Waterfront, sort of Friday nights. Yes. And part of that, they used to do um, a clip show of um, Flashing Blade. But they redubbed it into Scouse. Ah. <laughs> 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 I've not seen that one. It's one of the first scripts written by Russell T. Davis. He used to be yeah. So you've got things like you know, you've got the castle with the guys under siege and that. And all you've got is, will somebody bring me a door? Because you always put the doorway you know, so you'll come show and you're waiting for a door. Yeah. And you've got you've got things like the spy would turn off, it'll chuck. <laughs> there's there's clips of it on YouTube, go away. Oh. Flashing Blade is brilliant, but Flashing Blade in Scouts yeah. is just... That must have been the really? second time they read that bit. They read that bit comedy before then. Probably. But yeah. it's a 13-part yeah. yeah. series, yeah. and I guess Children's Holidays, Sorry. they only ever shoe the first 12, yeah. so they're the only ones that are dubbed into English. Yeah. So if you buy the box set, you've got English, 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 French. Yeah. <laughs> Are they getting subtitles on that? Yeah, they do subtitles, but yeah, the only way you sectors. see the last episode yeah, yeah. is just about the sectors. Yeah. Yeah. Insectors. Anybody else remember oh, that? Vaguely. Yeah. 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 French yeah. eco animation, but redubbed by um, Andy Seacombe. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 All apart from the last episode. Oh, God. Which. Perhaps if we could get hold of it, he might let us have and we could do a, uh, a radio play. <laughs> well, I've got a vision of a late night, night video watching here of all the last episodes we've never seen. Oh, yes! Yeah. 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 I'd love that. Yeah. 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 I, I have the opposite oh, program. Dave, yeah. I hope you're taking notes. I, I, um, I have the opposite program. I've seen the endings of all these series. Oh, I, never saw the first I never saw the first episode of Blake 7. Till sort of 30 years later. So, yeah. as far as I'm concerned, they got this bloody spaceship from somewhere. Yeah. It's never mentioned. Yeah. So, anyway, well, I think uh, there was no, no, no DVD, no video yeah. recorders and whatnot. Yeah, so uh, I didn't see the first episode of Airwolf. So, because there's this guy, Which for one? some reason, the, yeah. the, the, the 1960s. The, the, the movie. TV yeah, movie. Yes. Yeah. Jean Michel Jarre. Again, he's got the super helicopter yeah. Yeah. from yeah. nowhere <laughs> as a, a method of keeping supply in the desert. He's found a missile mine. Yeah, they kind of got a. I think that came off yeah, the back yeah. of um, the one Roy Shires and Thunder something. Blue Thunder. Yeah, Blue Thunder. 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 Blue
Or even worse, you know, that other tile in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's what the hood does in Thunderbirds. <laughs> yes. 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 Then when they upgrade, I will get them. <laughs> <laughs> Thunderbird yeah. one, no longer supported. <laughs> 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 All right. Let's just get around a bit. Are there any things from your from, from your youth yeah. you wouldn't mind seeing? A, you know, a, a bang on special effects modern version of the film Ooh, TV. Pathfinders into space. Nobody ever remembers that. No one Gerald Fudd. They went to Venus. It was quite interesting. They dug up all the plants to make penicillin. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I mean, in terms of they went to Mars. They went to Mars as well. Yeah. 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 In terms of remakes, yes, they did really call something in the sun. But I've got to be honest, the designs they came up with for redesigning the map, I didn't have a problem with. I've always had a problem with Thunderbird 1 and the other day. It just yeah. it doesn't look like it's a land yeah. property. As soon as you get the wheels on it, oh yeah, that makes sense. Now it works. Yeah. Yeah. Because Thunderbird 2 never made much sense because you've got the tiny little forward wings. <laughs> There was no, so was such a, what was supposed to presume was going to be a heavy brand. Funny, it was a good boost, but it was putting little wings on the um, side. I think they were aiming for it being a lifting point. There's an apocryphal story of Jerry Anderson <coughs> to come out, <coughs> going and visiting is. British Aerospace. Um, yeah. And everybody who designed it properly yeah. dagged their tools and spent the rest of the day working out what they can from the book to the block. They worked out. Apparently, the engineers turned around and said, yes, it would work. Do. To a large extent, yeah, it's got tiny wings, but the shape of the bottom is effectively a lifting wing. Yeah, that's the answer. It's just like the F-17 flies. You can take a brick, you snap all the engines on it, it'll fly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 it's like a bumblebee. You can't fly. Yeah, that wasn't there. Like I said, anything from your youth, you think, is blue football. Does anybody else remember the Tom Swift books? Yes. Not to be confused with Taylor Swift. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't know the title or not. It's shite. They've done three tries now at tomorrow, people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, three. Well, I, mean, I think I saw the last you had, one. You had the original one in the 70s, yeah. you had yeah. 1991, yeah. again, main yeah. set in London, yeah. and then you had the American one. And they finished it a whole bunch. Yeah, it's primeval they tried doing it. Yeah, because it's primeval. It's quite good. It's only one season. One season. I like to see a remake later. To be honest, there are things in the late 1970 As a whole package, I looked at it and I I did not get why people watch that and say this is fantastic. And they say, but Doctor Who is rubbish. And I thought, no, I didn't do that. I've not seen it for the whole time. I've actually got some whole time. I've 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 got some whole time. Maybe, but I will really say, having a master front and centre as, you know, is he a good guy or isn't he? Well, that's the whole point. You open my mouth. You know, you have to put some trust in you. Yeah. That's what I mean. You know, but you know, the book tag. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so watching the book tower and watching Tom Baker sticking his, sticking his finger in a bottle going, ink. I thought, oh my god, he's just poisoned that. that the kids watching this now. Oh, and then the took over from Tom Baker. Yeah, took a couple of scenes. Yes, but, but Jack and Ori, I mean, that really is. Good, no. Yeah. Yeah. The cribbing, that's the man. Well, I think they're doing on children's 
the new ones. Yeah. They're all new ones. Mm -hmm. A later book. It's, mm -hmm. it's not quite Jack and Ori, but it's along the lines. Yeah. yeah. But they have oh, really yeah. fantastic Jack and Ori adaptations. Yeah. But again, another one where I have fortune. I've watched The Iron Giant on Jack and Ori three times mm. without seeing the final episode. Oh. I had to wait until my teacher in school read us the only child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the bit I haven't seen, good. <laughs> well, the best version of the Hobbit on Jack and Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I'll stick in the top. That's the first one I remember. Stick in the top. That's a. Yeah. Oh, Kenneth, Kenneth yeah. Williams on Jack and Yeah. yeah. A box yeah. set of him, please. Or Bernard Cribbins. Yeah, definitely Bernard Cribbins. Mind you, Bernard Cribbins, no, there's a man who should have got a knighthood. Oh, yeah, there it is. If for nothing else, Orido Cook. Yeah. I think John Ivey. Yeah. 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 Did he get any? Did he get any? Uh, did he get any? He might have had a B of some sort. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure he'll have had a. You never know what they might have been offered, but so that. He he really was. Yeah. He could tell a story that night. Because I'm so I'm so glad he managed to come back for Doctor Who. I still think they could have made him an ex-police. Yes. You don't even know he was in pain. Yeah, just implied to believe that. He was a policeman for a bit, but didn't get on with it. I've always wanted to do Doctor Who do a story for the Doctor and running down a corridor. And they see two people running the other way. The next season, when they recast Doctor Who, you find out that's the Doctor and the next companion running the other way. See him. You could easily do it. Okay, I think we're going to draw some for close. Yeah. I propose to do this is part two of a trilogy. So I'm telling you right now, I'm intending to come back next year. Yeah. I'm asking you not to talk about the brilliant things. I want to know your childhood toys and games, the things you grew up with that influence you. And yes, we may have some Lego. So if you're very good. We are in here in eight minutes' time. For Dom, Dom, Dominic. Dominic. Yeah. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed your memories and have a good day.